Good morning. I'm Pastor Ginger Bagos, the Associate Pastor of Youth and Family Life here at the Bath Church in Bath, Ohio. We are so grateful to have you with us today. Whether you've been here from the beginning or you're just joining us for the first time, we're grateful you're here. There is Zoom coffee hour at 930. You can find that link on our website at bathucc.org under the worship tab, or it was also in the splash. It's a great season of epiphany, so arise. Your light has come. Please join me in the call to worship on this Epiphany Sunday. May this new year be a blessed and healthy year. This is the day that God has made. Let us be glad and rejoice in it. We have seen the light of Christ. We come to worship the light of the world. Please join me in saying the Church of Prayer. Be among us, gracious one, as we listen for your promises and hear how they have been made real. With those who have paid you homage through the ages, hear us as we come to you in the silence of our hearts and minds. Please hear this prayer for illumination. Almighty God, you have revealed yourself to us as one God. Give us grace to continue steadfast in the living of our faith and constant in our worship of you. For you live and reign, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Old Testament lesson is from the book of Isaiah. Chapter 60, verses 1 through 6. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness the peoples. But the Lord will arise upon you, and his glory will appear over you. Nations shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Lift up your eyes and look around. They all gather together. They come to you. Your sons shall come from far away, and your daughters shall be carried on their nurses' arms. Then you shall see and be radiant. Your heart shall thrill and rejoice because the abundance of the sea shall be brought to you. The wealth of the nation shall come to you. A multitude of camels shall cover you. The young camels of Median and Ephah, all those from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and frankincense and shall proclaim the praise of the Lord. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Ooh. 
Church. Good morning, Bath Church kids. In our gospel lesson today, the Bible's talking about the Magi and how they follow the star to find where Christ was born um, so they could give him gifts and worship him. A lot of times these Magi, though, are referred to as the three wise men, so that might be a term that you're more familiar with. But the funny thing is, is we don't exactly know how many there were, and we don't know if they were all men. So we just know that they were wise people and they followed the light to Christ. So I started to wonder, I, I wonder what they looked like. like. I wonder who they were. I wonder if they could look like this. Or maybe they looked like this. Could they have looked like this? Or this? I don't know. Then I started to wonder I wonder if they could have looked like me, or I wonder if they looked like you. And I think they could. I think they could, because the fact is, we are also called to follow a star. And it may not be a star in Bethlehem, but it's still a light, the light of Christ. And by loving Christ, and believing in Christ, and sharing his good news, you are also a wise one pretty cool right and there's wise ones all around us and they look like our neighbors and they look like the people who come to church here they look like your friends they look like your parents and they definitely look like you so this week I want you to really grab hold of your wise one duties and I want you to really pursue God and I want you to look for that light 
just like the wise people did in the Bible. So this week, I want you to find the light and I want you to find Christ in your heart. So thank you for joining me this morning. And before we close our time together, why don't we bow our heads and we can close in prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Happy New Year, and I'll see you next time. Now let us join our hearts and our minds in prayer. We thank you, God that you have spoken through people of faith for all generations and that you speak to us today. But on this Epiphany Sunday, you reveal yourself among us. We come wanting to know your presence, to hear your word and to see your light. For in these days of uncertainty, we can feel as though we are still mired in the dark. But because you have manifested yourself in Jesus the Christ, we are bold to come before you knowing that you are word of word, truth of truth, and light of light. We give you thanks for the many who are serving you now in very real ways by offering their time and their talent, by giving of themselves to help cure the ills of the world, people and situations in our towns and in our nation and in all the nations where your healing and wholeness are needed, especially now. Through your word that has come from so many witnesses, we too name Jesus as our light and our life. And we ask that you shine in our hearts so that we too may become signs of your presence on earth, revealing your peace and your hope and your justice and your mercy. May your people be a light to the nations. Hear our prayer through Jesus, your faithful servant, our brother and our Lord, in whose name we pray, amen. As we come to this time of offering, we are always grateful for the time, talent and treasure that has been bestowed upon us by our God. But as we remember the gift of the light of the world, let us hold that in our hearts.
please join me in a prayer. Holy God, bringer of light, we are so grateful for these gifts we have received today. Bless them and help us as a church bring the light to the whole world. In your son's name we pray. Amen. Today, our gospel lesson comes to us from the School of Matthew, chapter 2, verses 1 through 12, the familiar story of the visit to the infant Jesus by three visitors from the East. Hear now the words of the evangelist. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the East came to Jerusalem asking, where is the child who has been born, king of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened and all Jerusalem with him. 
and calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him in Bethlehem of Judea, as it has been written by the prophet, and you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem saying, go and search diligently for the child and when you have found him, bring me word so that I also may go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. This is the good news. Thanks be to God. Epiphany, any epiphany, is about revelation. God's revealing something of the divine self, breaking in to human history in a way that we can understand, apprehend, appreciate. This epiphany is about God's being revealed in Jesus on this 12th day when we celebrate the arrival of the Magi who worshiped him. This epiphany festival existed even before there was a Christmas festival. And you know the story. We are mesmerized by Magi who followed a star. We are horrified by Herod's plot. And then there are the gifts. And Christian tradition has given Christian meaning to those gifts. Gold is a gift for royalty, acknowledging that Jesus is of the house and lineage of David, a descendant of that great monarch. Frankincense was an expensive perfume that was burned at the temple site in Jerusalem, where God and humanity met. Myrrh was perfume for anointing, reminding us that Jesus is the anointed one, Hebrew word Messiah, Greek word Christos, Christ. The story of the Magi is loaded with fulfillment of prophecy, and it makes sense that it appears in Matthew because Matthew is all about fulfillment. What Matthew wants to affirm is that Jesus fulfills all the hopes that Israel had for freedom, for renewal, for reconciliation, and for return to the promised land, spiritually, if not literally. It's interesting that in this text, it's very clear that the Magi arrive to pay homage to Jesus, something you do to a ruler. It doesn't say that they come to worship as they would a god. So the Magi coming to pay homage to Jesus as king of the Jews was a great threat to Herod because his title was king of the Jews. And he would try his hardest to eliminate any threat to his power and to his title. Matthew only uses this term king of the Jews in one other place in the gospel. Think for a moment. He uses it as a sign above the cross at Jesus' crucifixion. 
the Magi were adept at astrology and astronomy, at interpreting dreams, in fortune telling, and as their name suggests, in magic. They found the rising of a star significant since the birth or death of a great person was thought to be accompanied by heavenly signs. These magi, we know, were from the east, from the Anatola, the rising, that is, from the place of the rising of the sun. And that resonated with Greek-speaking Jewish Christians in the first century, Matthew's audience. The rising of the sun brings light. And that was a popular theme. It has been always has been in scripture from the very beginning, let there be light. Including in today's lesson from Isaiah, arise and shine for your light has come and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. Isaiah's vision of salvation included a, the pilgrimage of the nations drawn by the light to worship the God of Israel. Matthew shows that the Magi fulfilled that prophetic expectation. This gospel begins with a visit of strangers from the East to honor the newborn Messiah. And it ends with the risen Christ command to go and make disciples of all nations. And that leads us back to the source of prophecy fulfilled, back to Isaiah's magnificent vision for Jerusalem, Zion's future, filled with light and prosperity. Arise your light has come, shine your light has dawned, and the presence of the Lord has shone upon you. Raise your eyes and look about and see a great new day for a venerable old city. Chaos will end. We could use some of that too. Israel's hope, Isaiah's hope, Matthew's hope, our hope is for chaos to end and a broken world to heal. Our epiphany is that we are called to be part of that actively. When we open our hearts, our minds, and our hands, when we offer our time and our talent and our treasure, we become God's partners in realizing hope and in honoring the giver of everything. Like those ancient travelers so long ago, we are on a journey and we too are guided by a star. It is leading us to where we should be. It's the way that we can honor the creator, the Christ, and the comforter by following its light. We can be the wise ones walking together, offering our gifts, and it helps us to be nourished by the feast that's prepared at the table that is before us today. We have seen a great light. This is our epiphany. May its peace surround us and its power lead us on. Come, for all things are now ready. We are blessed in this epiphany season to be reminded that Jesus is the light of the world. So let us be mindful of the light that shines in our lives as we come to this table today. There is a place for you at Christ's table. Come, for all things are now ready. As we prepare to celebrate the sacrament of Holy Communion, let us be at peace with ourselves, with our neighbors, and with the divine. The peace of Christ be with you.
God be with you. And, and also, also with you. Lift up your hearts. We, we lift, lift them up to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to God Most High. It, it is, is right, right to give, give God, God thanks and, and praise. praise. Blessed are you, holy God, with all who know you and all who love you. We join the endless refrain. Holy, 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 God of love and majesty, the whole universe sings of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. And on the night that he was betrayed, he took the bread and after giving thanks, he broke it and said to his disciples, take, eat, this is my body. Do this in remembrance of me, the body of Christ given for you. After supper, Jesus also took a cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples and said, Drink of this, all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, given and shed for you, for the remission of your sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Ministering to you, in the name and spirit of the living Christ, we share with you this cup of blessing. Let us give thanks to God in union with the faithful everywhere. We, we thank, thank you, God, God for life in the spirit of the living Christ, for gladness in this bread and cup, for a love that cannot die, for peace that the world cannot give nor take away, for the glory of creation, and for the mission of justice that we can make our own. Fill us with the gifts of this sacrament. Oneness of heart, love and forgiveness, offered and accepted, the will to serve and the willingness to grow. In your holy name we pray. Amen.
Now may God bless and keep us. May God's face shine upon us and be gracious to us. May God lift up the light of divine countenance upon us and grant us peace. Amen.